Check it out guys, I found the perfect size sign to go on the side of our truck. Let's cut it up and stick it on and see what it's going to look like. Check that out, is that badass or what? Man, it's hard to believe that old sign sit there on the side of that old building for 70 whatever years and now it's going to be doing 70 miles an hour down the highway. I think it looks great on the truck. What do you guys think? Oh, relax. I was just messing with you guys. Let's get on to the real video now. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Hardcore Fab Shop. One of our previous build videos on our hookers and blow truck, I was asking you guys what you would like to see for some bedsides on the truck. I gave you a few options. Overwhelmingly, everybody decided they would like to see some vintage gas signs on the side of the truck. And personally, I think that's a pretty badass idea. So, what we're going to do in today's video is take that piece of metal back there and we're going to try to turn it into a vintage sign that we can put on the truck. Since Julie and I are not good enough artists to be able to actually draw this out, we're cheating the system a little bit here. We've got one of these little tiny turd projectors, about the cheapest one you can find. It's not even good enough to actually show anything with the lights on. So we've got to turn the lights off and now you can actually see the pattern of the sign that we want to roll. So I guess we need to get some markers out and start tracing that up. So our art that we used to be able to project onto here was pretty pixelated by the time you got it this big up here on this. So we just kind of plotted out some spots. We're gonna actually take some straight edges and whatever we find that's round, like that lid, and be able to get the actual lines that we're gonna be bead rolling on there with that. So we will start laying that out. So this is our bed that we're actually going to be putting on the truck and you can see right about there there's a split in it. I'm going to go ahead and split this panel right at that point so that it'll be easier to handle. If we got two halves it'll be way easier in the bead roller instead of that big giant piece. We're also not going to have to do all of it because you can see there's a big giant notch out right there and some missing off the top so I can't get my finger to work. You guys get the idea though. We got her laid out, we got her cut in half, we're ready to actually start bead rolling the thing. This is a pretty big panel and even though I do have a little bit of a table underneath there, I need Julie to hold it just so it doesn't get all warped up because this is kind of some thin metal. So it's pretty easy to get lines and stuff scratched in if it's just out there hanging and dangling around. So we are using a art die on the top and just a regular step die on the bottom with about a quarter inch of gap between the two. and. Gonna line it up right on the lines. One, two, three. I'm gonna go four turns with my knob there. You wanna always count how many times you're doing that because every time you back it off to change and do a different line, you wanna go back to the exact same amount. So it's very important to keep track and count. I have to count it out in my head out loud, otherwise I'll screw it up. So you'll probably hear me do that more. You ready? This is a Mittler Brothers 36 inch bead roller. It's the Jamie Jordan edition. It does have an adjustable top die shaft and it is a variable speed over there too. 
as you can see, it goes pretty slow, so I think we ought to just go ahead and uh, go into time lapse mode here. All right, we've got the letters all done. That's looking really good. We've got the uh, first line here on the outside uh, shape done. And then we went to go and do the outside piece. And even with our 36 inch bead roller, which is the biggest one that Mittler Brothers sells, this panel doesn't fit. So what I end up having to do is I measured the gap that I had between the point here on this die and our step. And then I took some washers and I flipped these two both around and inverted them, stacked a couple of washers in there, which you guys can kind of see on the back side there, and then used our calipers to make sure that our step hasn't changed any as far as the distance from one to the other, because if this changes, that changes the shape. So now everything that we're gonna be doing is gonna be swinging that way off the table instead of into the mouth of the bead roller, so we'll be able to do the rest of it and knock out that last piece. can kind of see the letters popping up now a little bit I think they look pretty good and I think we're at the point now where we need to put some color on here so we'll of course do some black here on the letters and then this out here is going to be that reddish orange kind of color that was on the Texaco signs originally
All right, I got that all taped off. That was a total pain in my rear, but it is done. And I'm going to go ahead and put some of this gloss black right over the top of the bledders. And for the stripe around the outside, since this whole supply chain thing is all jacked up and nobody has anything in stock anymore to speak of at all, this was the only red that was on the shelf at the store that I went to, and it was literally only one choice. So. We've got red. This isn't exactly the red that I wanted, so I think what I'm going to do doing to begin with is putting a coat of yellow down over the white. That'll help kind of make this red just have a little bit more orange of a tint to it. So we're going to try that. We'll see if it works, and then we'll go from there. So we got two signs now. I went ahead and knocked out another one real quick, got it all painted up, and I've actually let it dry long enough now to where I can actually try to, you know, fit it to my truck. But before I do that, I wanted to talk a little bit about the fact that some of you might have caught that the A on the first sign wasn't filled in. You kind of seen that when I was painting it. I went ahead and did the second one and filled it all in and actually finished it out so you guys could have a better look at what the sign looks like. But I didn't do that on the first one because my truck is actually sitting on air ride and it's got an axle that goes way up inside there. And it's going to have most of this area through here gone. I'm not going to have that there because I need that space for my axle to go through. The uh, star is also gone off of the original design as well, which you guys have probably noticed. I could have done the star if I wanted to, but there again, that star would have been completely gone because you see exactly where my axle's at now. So that would have been a ton of work to knock out. Although definitely doable, I didn't want to waste the time and energy to do all that and then just turn around and cut it and throw it all away in the trash. So that's what I'm doing there and that's why it's, you know, made the way it is. And I'm also going to end up losing a lot of the sign across the top there because I have to raise this up enough to go there. So that gets cut off and Got a little bit of a swoop there on the back and you know the lower height so a good portion of the red is going to be gone off of that side of it so I want to go ahead and get those now cut and get them kind of fit onto the truck so I can see what material is left kind of get an eye on it to see what it looks like that all trimmed up and fitting in there it's looking pretty good but it definitely needs a little bit of age on it because that is way too bright and shiny looking for the rest of the truck but I think rather than doing up this sign since I've already spent so much time with it already and spent even more time now cutting it to fit I'm gonna go ahead and start aging the other one first and we'll see how that turns out and if I like it then I'll go ahead and I'll do these so step one to be able to get some age on this thing is I'm just going to take a red scuff pad and I'm going to try to go over it and I'm going to try to knock some of the shine off of it 
And I'm also going to try to enhance some of the bead rolls that are in there. It'll help those kind of pop a little bit and it'll also give it kind of a little bit more of a weathered look. I'm going to go ahead and uh, go on time lapse mode so I can turn the fan on, turn radio on, because this is going to take a minute. Alright, so I'm a little bit impatient when it comes to trying to sand, so I went ahead and broke out a piece of 320 sandpaper and that kind of helped get through some of this pretty quick. I actually sprayed this a lot thicker than I thought I did, so it didn't come off real good with just a scuff pad, but we've got some lines showing through there now. It's kind of starting to get a little bit of a weathered look to it. You know, if the sun was sitting out there baking on it for a really long time, it's going to hit the top part, so we, don't, we want to try to emphasize those, but the bottom sides of those lines they're not going to get direct sunlight on them, so we're not trying to sand those and bring those out. That'll kind of help give this a little bit more realistic look, I'm hoping. And same way with the, you know, the red up here. I brought out that line a little bit, but really not touching that much at all, at least at this point yet. So now we're ready to take it to the next stage, and that's going to probably kind of pain me a little bit, but um, I think the best thing I can do now is take it outside and throw it down in the dirt and on the rocks and maybe walk around on it a little bit. All right, so I couldn't bring myself to actually do it because we have like, I don't know, I hate to even think how much time I actually have in those, we have in those sign right now, but Julie is more than happy to go ahead and mark it up, I guess. So uh, here we go. that part's done <laughs> I've got some stain here it's a colonial maple 223 minwax for wood but I'm hoping that by taking some of this and rubbing it on the whole panel it's gonna kind of take away some of that bright shiny white part that we've got going on here and hopefully I'll kind of give it a little bit more of an aged look so I'm gonna go ahead and stick some of that on real quick So I really don't have a good technique for that other than just wiping it on and kind of blotting it off. You guys kind of see what I got going on there, so don't ask me any more than that because that's all I got. So up next, I'm gonna start hitting this thing with some paint. My first color I'm gonna use is a Rustic Mist. Next one is one of my favorites, Aged Rust. starting to look like something. I'm gonna let that dry for a little while. Wind will probably flip it off of here into the dirt. That'll probably just add a little bit to it. And we'll go from there. All right, so after that dried, I went ahead and did a second coat and that's definitely the ticket. So I went ahead and knocked out the other side of that sign and there you guys go. I think that looks pretty good. That's definitely matching the truck cab a lot better. So I'm really liking that. 
So I guess what that means now at this point, uh, I guess I need to do a bunch more sanding and uh, spraying on the panels that was already on here so we can actually see what it's going to look like on the truck when it's all said and done. I'm going to go ahead and grab the camera though and give you guys a little closer view of this because it definitely looks different in person than what it looks like on there. So maybe if I get you a little bit closer, you can kind of see a little better idea of what it looks like. So yeah, on the camera, it doesn't look like there's much going on in the center part here, but when you get closer, or if you're looking at it in person, you can see a bunch more little spots everywhere. I think that adds a lot to it. It's on both panels. See lots of little, looks like little nicks, little places where it's starting to rust and come through. Well, there you guys go. I got those other panels all aged up, and I think they look pretty decent. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. And while we're sitting here talking about it, I do go. I did go ahead and get some uh, rust on this finally up here. If you guys didn't watch the video where I was having problems getting some rust on there, I'll put you a link to it up above here. You guys can go check it out. But the bottom line, the problem was, is there was a coating on here that I didn't get off that they send, you know, from the factory when they make the sheets. To keep them from rusting so I needed to get that off of there and the best way to do that is muriatic acid and I know that I knew that going in I've been down that road a bunch of times before but since we did a little bit of sanding on them to begin with I thought we might be okay but we weren't so I went ahead and just shot it down with some muriatic acid and then when we got that rain on earlier there you seen this thing just rusted up like crazy so that is looking really good right now the best part about rainwater rust versus all the other things that you can do with, you know, the vinegar and the salt and peeing on it and all that kind of stuff that everybody says, um, is that this stuff, once it's rusted up, it usually is on there good. So it don't wipe off, it's not all over my hand. A lot of that other stuff is just a real fine coating on there and as soon as you touch it, it comes off and then you don't have it there anymore. So I like this scenario a lot better. It works out a lot better for me anyways and what i like to have happen so anyways there you go like i said there's the panels i'm gonna go ahead and chuck both of my tires and wheels that i got on over there on that side so we can get kind of a look at that that is about as far as i can take it today i think it's actually starting to come together look pretty decent well guys there you have it that's about all i got for you in this video just want to remind you though if you haven't subscribed yet to the channel you want to go ahead and do that because our next video is going to be even cooler than this one so see you next time